I want to talk to you now about unintended consequences. I want to talk to you about the way, in fact, that our technology choices have effects that we cannot predict. As this says, we're lousy at predicting the future. We don't know, even as the innovators, even as the creators, what is going to be the consequence of some of our actions. And really, nobody knows either. And nothing that we do anymore happens in a silo. The world is a much more complicated place than it has been in the past. When we think about the globalization of our economy, the global supply chains that we have, the global communications infrastructure, the fact that countries can have impacts in local localities that are far away from them, all of these things are a reality for us now. We have no choices. We have to take this reality into account. Now, this diagram is from the World Economic Forum, and it shows lots of different risks and possible consequences. But more importantly, it shows how they're interrelated, how local social unrest can result in social unrest and terrorism and violence across the globe, how social inequality in one place can extend far beyond the borders. All of these things are connected. We can no longer just analyze things the way we have in the past. We have to take all of these different connections into account. This is our responsibility. But there's a problem. This whole conference has been about taking action. But we are living in a world where we have to accept that there are consequences that we cannot predict. Machines and all of the, the innovations and all of the businesses that we create, no one really sets out to do harm. Almost no one sets out to do harm. <laughs> Absolute statements are a problem for me. Uh, but almost nobody sets out to cause harm. But we know harm occur occurs. I don't think Mark Zuckerberg, when he thought of Facebook, realized that massacres could be happening as a result of the misuse of his platform. These are unintended consequences. But we've been living with unintended consequences for a long time. Paper made information so much more readily available and accessible, but resulted in deforestation. Plastics, it's revolutionary, it's light. All of the things that we do with plastics, but think about the environmental consequences, not just for sea life, but there are cancer-causing agents in, in many of these. Manufacturing, the global standard of living, in fact, our first speaker talked about how much poverty has been reduced. The global standard of living is so much better. But think about the social cost of the Industrial Revolution, not to mention pollution. And the internet, it was supposed to be the great democratizing agent, how we could come together as a world and understand each other so much better. And what do we have? We have cyber attacks. We have privacy breaches. We have radicalized communities growing up because what they've done is this massive open platform has become a series of echo chambers where we can all sit in our safe little environment and not hear about those things that we don't want to listen to. And we've heard a lot about AI. I think it is a wonderful thing, but we have to be cognizant of it. Just like with all of the other technologies that we build, we have to recognize what these systems are representing, what these systems are learning from. As the last speaker said yesterday, if you feed it a biased data set, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get a biased model. There's no way around it. So we have to think about what do we do to mitigate these things. It used to be our world was more 
on your right hand side where we could predict things, where such a thing as best practices exists. We don't live in that world anymore. We're living on the other side where cause and effect can only be understood in hindsight if it can be understood at all. Maybe we have to think at this system's level. And if you look carefully at that chaotic quadrant, what you'll see is what you have to do first is act. In complex, you can probe and you can try to get a sense of what the right response is. But in most of the decisions that we have to make now, there's only so much probing we can do where we ha just have to jump in and take action and then probe and then sense and figure out what we have to do to respond. Because the world is increasingly complicated and interconnected. And there are entire research groups that are looking at how different systems interact with each other. How are we as business leaders supposed to deal with this? This diagram actually is only from 1996, and it still looks quaint to us because it's a very simple picture of what an enterprise needs to think about. Whereas now, our world looks much more like this, where we have to take into account as enterprises not just what we want to be doing with our customers, but what happens when Twitter or Facebook introduces a new way of interacting, and all of a sudden your customers, your banking customers, your retail customers want to interact with you in the same way they interact with Facebook and Twitter. You have an entire ecosystem. Your supply chains are more complicated. And oh, by the way, every single organization has that same kind of bubble. That's what our world looks like now. Increasingly, increasing complexity means it's hard to predict, but we still have to act. We have a responsibility to think about all of those different stakeholders. And we've been talking a lot about data. I hate to break the news to you, but there's one other thing that we need to worry about, and that's emotions. The neuroscientist Damasio has studied the brains and responses of people who have lost access to their emotional center. And they can logically explain to you why they should eat, but they can't decide what to eat without access to your emotions, and this is what separates us from machines, we cannot make decisions. But we have to. As leaders, we are asked to decide. We need our organizations to thrive. We need to be bold. But how do we do that in a world like this? People need to understand about the consequences. What are you doing? to ensure that someone who is not like you is not going to be afraid of the innovations that you are introducing? Are you bringing that kind of diversity into your decision making? What you need to do is you need to realize this is the world we live in. You need to have those sensors out there so that you understand when things are happening that you don't predict. And then you have to think about what do I do to counteract that, knowing that even your mitigations, even your, your attempts to make it right, still have the potential to suffer from unintended consequences. But we cannot not decide. We have to take action. We have to be bold. I'm neither a tech utopian or a dystopian. We can make this work but we have to accept the reality of the world that we live in.